Welcome to Daily Devotions. My name is Anya, and it's such a joy to sit under the word of the Lord with you today. We are in a series about heroes of the faith, and I've chosen Esther to share about. Now, before you write off this devotion and say, Anya, Esther is such an obvious choice of a hero of the faith. She was beautiful, she was the queen, she saved her people. What more could there be to the story? There is so much richness in the story, and I don't have time to dive into everything I'd like to, so I'm just going to point out her, the way that um, Esther really waits on God's timing and the way that she serves him even when she doesn't feel like it. And before we look at that, I have a little question for you. Have you ever known someone, an acquaintance, a colleague, who you wonder if they're a Christian, but you've never actually spoken about God with them? There's someone who the way that they act, the way that they do their life, the way that they speak, you wonder if there's a faith there. That's a bit like the book of Esther, because did you know that God is not mentioned once in this entire book? Yet we see his goodness and his story and his purpose for his people unfold all throughout the pages, and he's just woven in there a bit behind the scenes, maybe like someone you know. So when we look at the timing of Esther, she's been in a season of waiting. She's been at the palace for five years before the real meat of the story begins. And in those five years, I wonder if she sat there thinking, what's going on? Why am I queen? How am I in the palace? Who am I? Lord, why am I here? Have you had a season of waiting like that? Those seasons can be tough. But the great thing about Esther is that she was ready to be used even when she didn't really want to be used, maybe. So we see in Esther 4, she's sitting in a really difficult position. Mordecai is telling her she needs to save her people, and in order to do so, she must go to the king, which should be an easy thing, right? That's her husband. Wrong. She was terrified to go to the king. In verse 11, you can almost hear the panic in her voice as she responds saying, but 30 days have passed since I was called to go to the king. Can you imagine having a spouse that you hadn't seen for 30 days? And even worse, that you were terrified to even try to speak to because you thought that they would kill you? And then Mordecai reminds her that she won't escape Haman's verdict for the killing of her people. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance from the Jews, so, um, for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. This is a situation that would feel like way too much pressure to me. It's a situation where I would want to run back to my bed, hide, and pull the covers over my head. Do you think that Esther might have felt that way too? I imagine she could have. But instead of doing that, she stops and she fasts for three days and she calls on all of her people to fast along with her and she sits still before the Lord. And I love that Esther does this. This is something that I am not always good at and that I strive and I pray that I can be better at. Just sitting at the Lord's feet, calling out to him, petitioning to him, bringing my requests before him and begging him for wisdom in different situations. It's actually one of my favorite things about this book and something that I think is a really great takeaway um, for us to be doing in our lives, just like Esther did. And ultimately, Esther was able to deliver her people and it's a beautiful way, um, I won't go into it all now, but when you sort of look at chapters five and chapter six and the way that she had one banquet and then she paused and waited and then had another banquet before she asks Xerxes this massive question and having the wisdom to invite Haman along to make him feel like he's all really part of it. And then at the beginning of chapter six, seeing God move when um, Xerxes can't sleep at night and the chronicles are read to him. And then he realizes that Mordecai has never been honored. And so this honor needs to be bestowed upon him. And again, in God's perfect timing, Haman's the one that happens to be there, has to go bestow this honor on him, which would have been mortifying to him, right? Because he's the enemy and he doesn't want to do that. He hates this man. So God's perfect timing is just woven all throughout this and the way that Esther beautifully saves and delivers her people and that she's the chosen one to do that. And God chose another person to deliver all of us, and that's Jesus. And we again see the beauty of his perfect timing of his birth and his death and his resurrection. 
and the way that God paints that picture and from the beginning of the Bible until then and even in the end of the Bible in Revelation we just see this beautiful prophecy fulfilled in Jesus so I've never been asked to save a whole race of people uh, but there have been plenty of times that God has told me to stop and wait on him and those seasons are hard and I pray that for the times that I do get to know um, why, the why behind what was going on here on earth, I'll be really thankful for that. And for the times that I'm told to wait and that I don't get to know until I get to heaven, that when I'm there and I see everything that God has woven together and the little tiny, tiny part that I played of that here on earth, that I'll say, Oh, when that was going on over here in my life, God was using it for this thing over here and I had no idea. You may be in a season of waiting now and you cry out to God wondering if he hears you. Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. If you're in a time where your season of waiting, where your purpose is not clear, I just want to encourage you to cling to the Lord. He is good and he hears you and he loves you. And in his perfect timing, it will all be revealed. And who knows, maybe at some point you will have the Esther moment. For who knows that you have been brought to this royal position for such a time as this. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we praise you for purposefully timing everything under the sun. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for the times that we have questioned the way that you've been working in our life. For those who are in a season of waiting right now, Father, I ask that you will draw close to them, give them patience and perseverance as they wait on you and your good timing, Lord. For those, Lord, who don't have a clear purpose right now in life and are calling out to you and wondering what their purpose is in the situation that they're in, I ask that you will reveal that in your good timing and that you will give them that purpose day to day in doing your kingdom work in whatever position that they may be in, Lord. We thank you and praise you for your goodness throughout the ages and the way that you weave our stories together seamlessly for your good and for your kingdom. We lift all of this up to you in your son's holy name. Amen.